I'm going to start here with what it looks like in Lumen. Your first Excel homework is section 1.2. So you will have on January 25th submitted this Excel homework assignment by clicking in this link in uh, Luminome and attaching your Excel assignment. That's on January 25th. Right now, that is all you see here. The day after this is due, so the morning of January 26th, a new thing will show up right below this. And let me just show you what that will look like. Okay, it'll look like this. So underneath that, you'll now, the day after the Excel is due, see self-grading forum for Excel 1.2. So it has some instructions for you there, but right at the top of that, you will see the solutions. So this is a set of solutions to that Excel 1.2 assignment that I have written. And it doesn't have to look exactly like what your submission looks like, but you can use these solutions to compare accuracy, to also take a look at things like, how did I answer questions in context? How did I make the whole assignment look? And so forth. And your job for your self-grading is is to open up the solutions and open up the Excel submission that you turned in and compare the two. You will then write uh, your comments about things that you got incorrect, things that you didn't complete at all, etc., and you'll submit that as your self grading. This is your chance to learn from your errors, correct your own mistakes, and tell me the things that you um, would improve on next time you did problems like these. So I just, in this video, I'm going to show you an example of doing that. So it says first to open your original Excel submission. So what I've done for this video is I have created a fake homework submission. So these are not problems that you are assigned in any manner. I just totally made up some problems. So here is a homework submission, a fake homework submission, where I have three homework problems. Example homework number one, you'll note this particular problem is a homework answers where I did everything kind of perfectly. And then in homework problem number two, in this example, I kind of messed it up. I couldn't figure out how to do the Excel formula for the Y values. Um, I, I wrote in my text box, I can't figure this out. And then for the fourth one, I, I have a lot of uh, a table, a graph, a text box, but you'll find that I made some errors. So I'm going to go through how would I would do self corrections on each of those. It says, open up your Excel submission and compare your answers to the solutions. So you would on your computer have that file open that you submitted and you would next to it have your solutions that I made available to you right here. And then you can compare. It says then for each problem in the assignment, make a new corrections text box next to the problem in a new color. So here's, for example, what I mean. I come to this first problem. This is my original submission. I insert a new text box right here. And what I do is I right click on that and I'm just going to fill that with like orange color. So corrections, see, just like that. And in this corrections box is the only place that I'm going to do any typing. Don't actually change your original submission. Cause when I open this, I like to be able to look and see directly, like, here's what you originally wrote. You know, here was the errors you made. And in your corrections box, I can see your reflection on that. So this example homework problem number one in my corrections box, after I compare my answers to the solutions, I would find that everything looks really good. This problem looks accurate and complete. So if you find sometime that everything looks perfect and you can't find a single thing wrong, um, that's fine. Just go ahead and write that. I mean, I might disagree. Uh, so actually pay attention, you know, go through with a fine tooth comb and make sure you do actually have everything correct. Um, but I mean, sometimes you'll definitely find that everything looks good and complete. And that's what you would say. For example, homework number two, I now am going to create a new text box for this one. And again, I just draw my little text box, right click. I'm going to make it orange and corrections. 
Okay, so this one I definitely have some problems because I didn't finish the problem. So whatever the problem asked me to do, I was unable to uh, create a successful formula in column B. I wrote in my text box, I can't figure this out. So what I want you to do if ever you get stuck and you end up turning something in that is incomplete, you should write in your corrections box um, what happened? Like, clearly you can look at the solutions and you can see how to do it correctly now. So I don't need you to copy that from me, but I want you to tell me why were you unable to successfully complete this? That might be things like I ran out of time and, and I will start my assignment earlier next time. Or maybe it's that you really did start in an appropriate amount of time and you really tried your very best, but you just couldn't figure it out. If that's the case, how would you approach this sort of issue next time? Well, maybe you'll say something like, I plan to visit your office hours if I get stuck like this again. Or maybe you'd say that you were going to link in with one of the tutors in the math center. That's fine too. The tutors can help you with this sort of thing. For example three, this was a homework submission problem where it kind of looks like I was complete. I have a table, I have a graph, I have my text box. It's pretty complete, but um, I'm just going to, again, these are just totally made up problems, but I'm going to pretend that when you look at the solutions, you notice that there's um, quite a few errors here and things missing. So for example, in my corrections area, I might note, I didn't have labels in context on the table or the graph. P is price per item, which should be on the horizontal axis and also in the table. Q is the number of items sold and should be on the vertical axis and also in the table. So we want labels on your table and labels on the axes of your graph. Um, I'll notice an error. So since P is the input price and Q is the output number sold, the actual interpretation here is backwards. So I would note that the y-intercept contextual sentence is wrong. So you would note that here in the corrections area, and you might say something like zero is the price and 300 is the number sold, something like that. And then I'll notice one last thing here. The x-intercept is this, but I didn't even write a contextual sentence. I am missing the contextual sentence for the x-intercept. So these are the sorts of things you would write in your corrections area. You know, errors that you made, things that you were missing that you saw in the solutions that reminded you, oops, I forgot to do that. Um, labels on graphs and tables, that sort of thing. So these are the sorts of things I want to see in your self-corrections. And you should be getting these answers from the solutions file that is available right here at the top. And again, you will not see this forum until the day after the initial assignment was due obviously because I can't post the solutions until you guys have all, you know, submitted it. All right. And let me know if you have questions while you're working on this. After you've done it a couple times, you'll get used to it and you should be good to go.